Not too long ago, I watched a movie called Hancock. And it's a superhero movie with a twist. All the previews for it were Hancock making mistakes, trying to be a hero, but not quite doing the job correctly, having good intentions, but having more destruction than help. This is a theme that's seen not just in the movie Hancock, but in the Archie comics and in the show that I tried out uh, last week. I'm not going to continue to watch, but I tried it out and they had that same theme. They went after an item that was worth about $60 and caused $24 million in damage. Didn't quite work out very well. That's kind of what we see here in the good intentions of the Pharisees creating these traditions, yet breaking the law. Having these good intentions of taking an interpretation of the law, but not by getting it right, or not taking the whole law into consideration. See, the law is that which is given by God, the scriptures that are given. There's a three-legged school that many Episcopalians like to refer to, and that's scripture, tradition, and reason. And, and these three things help us to understand how to be in the church through scripture, tradition, and reason. We have scripture which is given to us, and then we have tradition that's taken from the scriptures, and then we have our own reasoning that goes along with this. The thing we have to remember is it's not a valid school. Scripture is where everything comes from. Scripture is the basis where we take things. And that's what Paul, what Jesus was saying here in chapter 15 of Matthew. He was saying, you're creating these traditions but they're making a problem for the law. He says, why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses his father and mother must be put to death. But you say that if a man says to his father and mother, whatever help you might otherwise have received from me is a gift to go to God or a korban, he is not to honor his father with it. Thus you nullify the word of God for the sake of your tradition. Now, there are occasions that a person, a Hebrew man, could have said korban about a gift, about his money. It was a way to say that this is dedicated to God. And there was a way that it come from his parents as well. His father could say, please do not help me out in my old age. I don't need your help. Or please don't help me out right now. I don't need your help. The thing is, is that something that your father might say to you when you say 33 years old may not quite stand up so well when he's 66 years old. But a lifetime later, something bad might happen. Something difficult might occur. And he, he may even come back and say, Eric, I need your help. He may have to come back and, and say, Arlie, I need your help. He may have to come back and say, I need your help. And in these occasions, there was provisions, there are provisions in the law to be able to take back an oath like that. To say, I'm going to swallow my pride. To say, I can't. See, that, that's a lesson that we learned from the book of Judges. In the book of Judges, we have a man who made a very rash vow. In his vow, he said, Lord, if you will help me win this battle, then the first thing that comes out of my house I will offer to you as thanksgiving. Now, it comes to me that he was helped out. That he was able to, to defeat the people. And the first thing that comes out to see him is his daughter. And he says, I must sacrifice her. That must be what I must do. But the thing that he had to remember, number one, was that it's against the commands of God. And number two, is that God gives provisions for a rash vow. That God gives a way out of these vows that are given 
rashly. A sacrifice can be made, and for us, a rash vow can be taken as that. And sometimes that sacrifice is that effort to say, I'm sorry, I was prideful, I was boastful. Please, please don't hold this against me. Now, what's said elsewhere in scripture is, please do not make any oaths. Instead, let your yes be yes and your no, no. But in this case, you simply have to say, sometimes you have to break a Because sometimes they're not done in the right judgment. And sometimes life happens to make it difficult for you. So just as the father had this vow to sacrifice his daughter, so also he's talking about all these people who made a vow to make their gift devoted only to God, but then could not honor that ability to help out their father in their old age. But see, the thing was, was it wasn't just simply that, that they were themselves thinking they couldn't get out of it. They'd go to the scribes and say, can you get out of it? And the scribes would say, no. Which is contrary to what the scriptures said, but not contrary to the traditions they created based on part of the scripture. See, that's the thing that we have to distinguish even within our traditions in this church. Which are the ones that are based on scripture and which are the ones that are based on tradition or reason? And that's the judgment we have to make. Everything that we do should be analyzed through the spectrum of the scriptures. Why do we do it? Paul had the great saying about the Bereans. The Bereans were a more noble character than the Thessalonians because they studied the scriptures every day to see if what he was saying was true. That's the same thing that, that we do or should do as ideas are presented to us, whether they come from tradition or reason, whether they line up with scripture. Life can be difficult. And for some people, they just hold on to these ideas and don't want to let them go. They don't want to let them be taken away from them because they honor their traditions more than they honor scripture. And it's not just the Pharisees in Jesus' day. We also see this in, in Galatians today as well. We look at Galatians chapter 4. Verse 